Welcome everyone. Welcome to The Crowned Life and I hope you're enjoying the scenery today. I wanted to add a little bit of peace to the atmosphere because this is a difficult topic that we're discussing today about why they never change, why they're not sorry and they never come back. And I feel like it's a long overdue message, um, particularly for many of my viewers uh, who watch a lot of tarot and they deal with this every Mercury retrograde season. Uh, these messages about, oh, somebody's coming back from the past. They're sorry they've changed. And then you sit and wait and wait and wait and hell never freezes over, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, if they come back, hey, good for you, you know, and if you wanted it, right? Double good for you, right? Um, I, I guess no good for you if you didn't want them to come back and they did, but for those of you who want them to come back, wish they'd change, wish you could reconcile, but it never happens, this video is for you. And yeah, it is kind of a timely issue because I'm filming this as we're in the middle of Mercury retrograde. By the way, last Mercury retrograde, I filmed a video titled, uh, Should I Reconcile with My Ex During Mercury Retrograde? So if you're interested in that, I'll have the link for it at the very end of this video. So just stay tuned to the end and then you can click right through um, in the final screen. But getting to the topic of this video, you know, we're going to cover a lot of ground here um, as to, you know, these, these three subject areas of why uh, they never change, they're never sorry, they're not coming back. Um, but I will say in a nutshell, for those of you who have very short attention spans out in YouTube land and you want me to lay it out in three minutes or less, <laughs> um, basically, you know, a lot of people, in my opinion, the reason why is because, in my opinion, they don't think they're wrong. Most people don't think that they're wrong. Or even if they know they're wrong, they feel justified. It's the yeah buts, yeah but. Yeah, I know I cheated on you, but, you know, you weren't taking care of yourself. You let yourself go. You, you were complaining and criticizing and uh, fill in the blank, right? Um, it's, it's either they don't think they're wrong or um, they feel justified in doing wrong. And so there you are, you're, you're at the same standoff that you were at when you broke up. And as long as both of you think you're uh, right, well, or then the other one's wrong, I mean, there's, there's no give there, right? And that's, that's why. Or some people just don't see a way because they, again, where they left off was, oh, I'm gonna have to make changes in order for this to work out, in order for us to come together. I'm gonna have to make changes in my life that I'm not willing to change because I think I'm right in this, in not making this change, or I think I'm justified in doing what's wrong, which is not to make the change. Either way, you see what I'm saying? We're back at the same result where uh, there's no reconciliation. The other issue is that most people in general, it's just human nature, we are resistant to um, change. And a lot of people are stuck in subconscious patterns and um, not even understanding why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep attracting this type of person? Or why do I keep getting into these kind of dynamics in a relationship? Um, and they could go, you know, decades pointing the finger at everybody but themselves um, because they're thinking it's other people. Well, and it might be, but it's like, okay, so why do you keep attracting those other people? Well, finding the answer to that question is going to require introspective work that most people, in my experience, just don't bother doing. They've got to be um, self-aware, they've got to be engaged, actively engaged in personal development to get out of these unconscious patterns. And also to see other people's perspectives, to see the duality, the pros and cons, because again, a lot of people are in this black or white, right or wrong. But when you get into, you know, self-awareness, introspective, uh, personal development type work, 
you come to this point where you see the pros and cons of your side of it and the pros and cons of their side of it and then you're like ah oh, okay how can we come together and uh, work this out if that's what you want to do and I'm assuming that you do otherwise you probably wouldn't have clicked on this video so why do people resist change it could be summed up in you know a couple words um, lack of confidence lack of self-esteem people tend to stick with what's familiar because that's what makes them feel secure right the the devil that I know is better than the devil I don't know right <laughs> you see this a lot like women who are in um, domestic violence situations people wonder why do they go back why do they go back well they're afraid what if I leave and it's worse or I did try to leave and it was worse and I don't want that to happen again what if that happens again so people will uh, stay with what's familiar even if it's toxic um, because that is a way of them feeling like they're safe they're secure or that they're in control of their life and whatever makes them feel like they're in control of their life um, is what they're going to cling to and, and it might even yeah be a sense of false empowerment but it's something that makes them feel like they're not losing control of their life and maybe even feeling confronted with a feeling of incompetence like i know i need to do something different but i don't know how i you know let's say you're dealing with a person who's an addict and they know it's been ruining relationship after relationship after relationship but they don't know how to live any different they don't know how to quit hanging out with those friends that keep dragging them down you know what I'm saying and so they just uh, stick with what they know and what they feel competent in doing they, they don't feel uncomfortable trying to make friends with a different kind of people you know who addiction is not their main thing in life right and we go back to what we know um, especially if we are afraid of change we're afraid of um, it bringing loss or the domino effect that occurs there's also a low level of trust I think that a lot of people experience even if you know you're we're we're talking about somebody who's generally very bold very courageous maybe even comes across cocky or arrogant at some subconscious level they don't trust they don't trust other people um, especially if it's if the, the idea of change is somebody else's idea it's not theirs and with a very low level of, of distrust even at a subconscious level you're going to distrust and resist change that other people are proposing and why is it that a lot of us have this okay whether whether we are aware of it or not why do we have this deep subconscious distrust of other people it's because let's get real this reality that we live in a lot of people play zero-sum games where it's like I win you lose and they're okay with it like hey that's your problem I'm gonna go get mine and if people get caught in the crossfire if you know there are unintended casualties from this oh well let the chips fall where they may this is the type of um dog eat dog world mentality that a lot of people live in and so uh, whether you are fully aware of it whether you can articulate it or not at some deep subconscious level i'd say the majority of us are dealing with some kind of subconscious distrust of other people that makes us resist other people's idea of change whether we are even aware of that motivating us or not we just simply um, cannot trust other people to take our best interests as their own and that creates an atmosphere of distrust for this reason a lot of us fight hard against change if we don't choose it it wasn't our choice or we don't understand the need for it for this reason a lot of change happens through pain and by force unfortunately many of us resist it and we want things to go back to normal the way it always was and 
if we don't see the reward or the benefit in change or we don't trust it or see the justification for the effort then if we think that the change is going to lead to some kind of pain and not pleasure then we're going to fight it and resist it every step of the way but if the change is seen as positive needed and wanted then it's considered a safe change and is met with little or no resistance so my advice is to try to work with change which believe me when i say this please understand um, i don't say this flippantly i am a double fixed sign okay so for those of you who don't know astrology aquarius my, I'm Aquarius Sun, Taurus rising. <laughs> All right, these are fixed signs, okay, very prominently placed. And the fixed signs, we don't like to change. We like things to just, you know, keep it the way it is. And if it changes, it's an unwanted change, we are very much like, let's put it back to the way it was. Let's put it back to normal, which might have been very abnormal. <laughs> But that's us. Like, we're about maintaining and keeping things solid. All right. But um, something that I've learned is um, that you got to really work with change. Change is constant. Work with it. Um, work with any resistance that you have to change because it's always going to be. It's a part of life. It's like the seasons are always changing, right? And we're going through cycles in life. You, you're just not going to escape the fact that we've got a change in this life. And I know some of you are like, yeah, I, I don't need to be told that. This other person does. But <laughs> um, maybe you do, actually. Maybe you need to change your response to their unchanged behavior. That's another video for another time. But I want to advise um, working with resistance that you have to change, um, not against it, and working to resolve resistance within yourself and something that I learned through life um, about uh, working with resistance is that when you know when you don't it creates a lot of pain let me give you an example and a lot of unnecessary pain I should say and an example of this is that in childbirth for those of you who don't know I've birthed three um, babies naturally and um, so what I learned from natural childbirth is that um, a lot of pain that women experience in childbirth is unnecessary and avoidable if they um, don't fight their bodies, okay? Um, the more they tense up, and, and it's almost like with every contraction, they're contracting and resisting by contracting their body. Um, that is creating unnecessary pain in labor so um, it's like you're counter contracting for every contraction and then that's going to make you feel a lot more uh, pain and so the key to avoiding unnecessary pain in childbirth is not to fight it to flow with it to allow it and be open open up to the birth experience and the less you fight your body, the less pain you feel. Now that's a physical example, but on an emotional level, let's tie it back to what you're going through. Um, allow, don't fight it. Um, because the more you resist it, the more unnecessary pain you're causing yourself. So consider for yourself right now, what are you resisting in your life? What have you resisted? What? what have you maybe planned on resisting in the future? Um, I've been going through wanting a change in my life and it seems like that's something that I have not been able to get. So, you know, I've, I've posted in previous videos that I've just, I've relaxed and I've flowed with it. Like, okay, there's a timing issue and I'm just gonna flow with it. And yeah, I don't wanna do that, but um, the more I refuse to accept and not allow what is, the more unnecessary emotional pain I'm causing myself. So think about how that might be um, applied to your life. If you're dealing with somebody who refuses to change, and like I said, now the ball is in your court for you to change your response maybe to unchanged behavior. All right, why they're not sorry. <laughs> Well, I mean, you kind of know, if you made it this far, you know, but I'm gonna say some of you dealt with um, individuals who pulled you in and then they pulled right out. They pulled the rug right out from under you and um, 
you know, some of you are wondering, my God, you know, how could somebody do this, you know? And just as a side note, something I've learned is that a lot of times, particularly if, if you know, you're a woman dealing with a man, um, something I've learned is that a lot of times, just because of men's psychology, uh, a lot of times when they're dating women, um, uh, you know, they've got one foot in the door and one foot out. And I think maybe even in, in a marriage situation, unfortunately, that could be the case where they were never 100% in. And again, this goes back to an unconscious, deep-rooted distrust of people, feeling that they don't have their best interests and they can't give you their all. They can't be fully vulnerable because then you're gonna take advantage of them and that they're gonna get exploited. And so for some of you, if you dealt with this energy of somebody who had one foot in the door and one foot out, they might not have been, you know, their heart was not completely in it like perhaps yours was. Um, and again, this is like if somebody was kind of hot and cold, like how do they shut it off? How can they be so hot and on fire for me? And then the moment I don't give them their little thing that they wanted, boom, they're out, you know? And this might, if you've dealt with this, this might have left you in a situation where you are now, you know, waiting, hoping, thinking, analyzing, picking yourself to death, you know, with thoughts of what did I do wrong and how can I fix this? And um, this is especially the case if you've got self-worth wounds and a lot of women do, a lot of, that would again have to be another video for another time, but um, this whole dynamic puts you in an energy of a, you know, runner chaser type dynamic and, you know, energetically, psychically, you are propping them up by, you know, engaging in this. And so my advice, if you, you know, to solve this problem is, you know, withdraw your psychic energy if possible by no longer chasing them. Let them feel your absence. And know that your absence could catalyze their, their interest and their effort. It reminds me of that song um, by the band Perry, If I Die Young. There's a lyric in the, in the song that says, funny when you're dead, how people start listening. <laughs> I'm not saying die, okay? I'm just saying maybe, you know what? Fall off the face of the planet, you know? And um, see what people do, okay? Um, see if they notice, see if they come back. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. And I'm gonna say this, if they do come back, then that's going to change the energy. If they don't, that's very telling that maybe you were right to have moved on in the first place. Yeah, if they don't come back, I mean, that's really kind of letting you know that they haven't dealt with their issue, they're not ready to deal with their issue, um, that maybe they still care more about their pet issue more than they do you. And, you know, honestly, do you really want to be involved with somebody like that? Okay, as a side note, let me talk about ghosting real quick. Um, this is somebody who just left you with, they left you hanging. They left you without any explanation as to why they up and disappeared. This is not somebody who explained why they're stepping away from the relationship. Um, it's somebody who refused to address the issue in the first place. So. Yeah, ghosting is like when everything is going good and then out of nowhere for unexplained reasons, this person disappears, you know, without, without warning, without explanation. They ignore you and it could be if you dealt with this that, you know, well, this is somebody who has lied to you and they can't come back and face you and answer to that. Or it could also be that um, this person had a lot of other options and um, unfortunately you might not have been the option chosen, I'm sorry to say, right? It happens to all of us. Um, and I think also it's people do this when they don't wanna burn bridges. Like they, they, they're looking for the back door but they leave it open. <laughs> They leave it open and um, because they don't want to burn bridges with you. They want to exit for their convenience and then come back when it's more convenient for them at a later time. And, you know, you see these people who act like nothing happened. Oh, oh, uh, how are you doing? You know, like, where have you been? You know, and they'll pick up like nothing ever happened. 
Okay, so regardless of this scenario, whether somebody ghosted you or not, I'm gonna say the simplest, though most brutal explanation for this is that they never loved you. And I know some of you don't wanna hear that, okay? But realize that love is something I think a lot of people don't know how to do. The more, the longer I live, the more I understand about love, that it is taking another person's best interests as your own. If you, divine, if you define love that way, you realize most people do not love in the purest sense of the meaning of that word. They don't. A lot of people throw that word around, but they don't love in the purest sense of the meaning. And so, um, if they didn't do that, they didn't take your best interests as their own, then they probably did not love you, and I'm sorry. Um, we have to discern real love from love bombing, okay? Somebody who's trying to win the girl by saying or doing whatever to get her, sweep her off her feet, sell her this fairy tale romance, but when the mask comes off, you find out that this is somebody who's highly opportunistic and exploitive. All right, so let's wrap it up with why they're not coming back. Um, often, you know, returning means that they're going to have to be sorry and change, which I already addressed why they're not doing that, right? Um, and the other possibility is that they do return, but again, you know, they either don't say they're sorry or, you know, they hope you sweep it under the rug, or they say they're sorry, but they they don't mean it, okay? Um, a lot of people, when they come back and say they're sorry, if they even say those words, I found a lot of, a lot of times, again, people don't understand what apologizing is. To a lot of people, it's just, act. hey, can we act like, you know, this never happened? Can we let bygones be bygones? Um, and the apology is not about change at all. Um, it's about you forgiving them, but more important, you forgetting about what they did because um, to a lot of people, forgiveness means let's forget this ever happened. Let's get back to business as usual in this relationship um, so I can get my needs met while I'm neglecting yours. And, you know, particularly if you're dealing with a narcissist or somebody who has a lot of narcissistic character traits, you gotta be careful with this because forgiveness means permission to a lot of them. It really does. Unfortunately, forgiveness for a lot of people is about getting back to the good old days. You know, getting back to the way that it used to be before they got caught and confronted with the truth about how you feel and what your emotional needs are that weren't getting met. <laughs> and that they have no intention of meeting. So a tip that I want to leave you off with in terms of, you know, avoiding this unnecessary pain in the future is, you know, learn to recognize irreconcilable differences sooner than later. Um, and, and then respond appropriately to avoid this. And I think that a lot of women struggle to do this because we want to heal. We, um, we, sometimes we want to fix things. We want to talk through and reason. We think that, oh, we could just talk this through or reason through it or that love cures all or whatever. But if there are core incompatibilities in terms of your value systems and your emotional needs and you can't get on the same page, well, um, that unfortunately doesn't bode well for long-term success in a, and happiness in a relationship. So um, I encourage you to discover these things through having quality conversations. And uh, I do have a video out about that. If you wanna check it out, I'll put the link at the very end. And um, also, you know, if you were lied to by somebody who just charmed the pants off of you, ghosted, or did some kind of disappearing act, <laughs> um, and you suspect that, you know, you were lied to and this person never loved you, um, you know, do check out my video about how to stop being lied to. And also, um, I have a video out titled What Women Want, and it, it's really good for helping women to recognize beta males, fake alphas, 
and um, it's good for men to watch as well if they want to know what women want okay but um, I will have those videos if you want to watch more um, here in the final screen and until next time I am wishing you all the best be blessed